everybody and welcome back to this series. It is the 27th of February 2017. I have my competition in like, what, seven days, six days from now. I step on the stage for my first ever fitness model competition. It's crazy, it's crazy, crazy, crazy. I can't believe I'm super pumped. But I wanna talk about something. It's been on my mind for a while. It needs to be talked about. You know, it's frustrating because we all know what it's like to go on a diet and then be on that diet for 30 days, 60, 90 days or whatever. And then when that's finished, we then put all that weight back on. We go back to how we were, if not worse, we end up gaining more weight than what we started with before we started the program. I've been there, I'm sure most of you watching this have been there as well. And it's f***ing frustrating to say the least. Now, what has really pissed me off over the years of you know, studying nutrition and doing this as a practitioner, like someone who's actually achieved the results and maintained the results and now doing my first ever fitness model comp and working with people and everything through my website is that no one f***ing talks about, and I'm talking about authors here, nobody talks about why people yo-yo diet. Why? Why is it? And this fascinates me. Why? And this is why I'm not a big proponent of 30 day programs and 60 day programs because, because most of those programs do squat, do nothing to get that person past the 30 days, 60, 90 days, six weeks, 12 weeks, whatever it is. Because what happens, and I've always been fascinated by this question, what happens at day 31? What happens at day 61? What happens at week seven when the program is finished? You just go back to how you were, you just go back to what you're eating. Most programs fail to recover people in what is usually called reverse dieting. Now, if you're watching this, you've never heard of that term, don't worry, I never heard of it before either. You know, for a couple of years ago, that was the first time I heard about it. Now, Eric Helms from 3DMJ or 3D Muscle Journey, he talks about this and there's, there's quite a bit of discussion about reverse diet. It's been around for a while. It's not a fat. It's not something that came out yesterday. Reverse dieting is like the diet after the diet. It's like you've got the program, which is what have you been doing, right? For 30 days or 90 days or whatever. And then you've got this thing after it called the reverse diet. It's called, as Eric Helms calls it, the recovery diet, which I like, I prefer recovery diet more than reverse diet because it makes more sense. So what that means is that, you know, I've put this in context for you. When you're on a diet, right? When you're on a calorie deficit, when you're restricting your diet some way to lose weight, lose fat, whatever, right? When you're restricting yourself in some way, your body tries to fight that your body through metabolic adaptation will try and resist any changes that you make to its homeostasis, to its balance. So if you try and restrict calories from whatever program you're doing, your body, your metabolism will slow down. Your body's ability to burn energy becomes more efficient. So it doesn't burn as much energy. And so it increases, so you have all these hormonal changes as well that take place whereby, you know, leptin levels drop and you've got thyroid hormonal changes, you've got changes to testosterone, whereby you feel more hungry than what you did prior to dropping the calorie. All these little, ch all these changes take place in your body. Your body is trying to resist that. What you're trying to do, you're trying to, you're trying, you're trying to throw it out of homeostasis. The body is trying to resist that. So that's what it does. It makes you feel hungry. Right, conserves your energy. There's a thing called uh, non-exercise activity thermogenesis, or NEAT. And I'll link a research article below. It's basically any activity where you're fidgeting, you know, you're tapping your fingers, you're tapping your feet, you know, like bad, bad, bad habits that people have. Well, that kind of activity requires calories, right, to burn. You, you know, tapping your feet requires calories. So tapping your fingers and that kind of stuff, walking the dog. So the body actually reduces those kinds of activities when you're in a calorie deficit. So it does a number of things. What happens though, because your metabolism slows down and the body's expenditure becomes more efficient, what happens 
is that when you get to the end of the program, the 30 day program or whatever, most people do what? What would you do? What would you, I mean, I know in the past, I've gotten to the end of a program and I just go crazy. I just eat whatever I want, whatever passes my eye, just eat everything. That's what I did in the past. And I'm sure if you're watching this, you've done the same thing. What happens? No surprise what happens. You put all the weight back on, you get miserable, and you run the, again, yo-yo dieting. That's, that's what it's all about. However, if you reverse diet, the idea of that is you're slowly increasing calories, right? So for example, if you're dieting down, I speak of calories because it's all a numbers game. That's all it is. You know, weight loss and weight gain is all a numbers game. Whether you count portions or not, whether you cut foods out or not, whether you cut sugar out or not, it all boils down to numbers. All energy balance, all numbers. Okay, that's the premise of it all. So for example, if you're dieting at 2000 calories, your metabolism is gonna be suppressed. If you're a guy watching this, you're 2000 calories, you say 1000 calories below the amount of calories you need to maintain your weight. The idea of reverse dieting is that you slowly increase your calories back into your diet on a week to week basis by about 150, 200 calories per week. So week one after the diet, 2,200 thereabouts. Week two after the diet, 2,400 calories. Week three, and you get the picture. So you slowly reintroduce those calories back into your diet. So that way you can slowly bring the metabolism back up, back up to your maintenance level of calories, and then you're, better, you're in a better place, you're in a better position than if you are in a metabolically suppressed environment, day 30, day 60, day 90, you finish the program, you are psychologically primed to overeat and you're physiologically inclined to, you know, uh, store a bunch of fat. So you really have three options. You know, when you finish whatever diet program you're on, whatever, all right, we have three, you have three options. Option one is going to binge eat. Just eat whatever you want. That's the, that's the option that everybody is inclined to do because psychologically, you've been restricted for so long. You can't have this, you can't have this, you can't do this, you can't do this, you can't do this. So psychologically, it takes us toll, right? And so when you get to the end of the program, you're psychologically inclined to binge eat. Option one, bad option, but that's the one we're more inclined to do. Option two is that you can just keep going. You can just maintain that deficit until the cows come home, right? And then, but by doing that, you're just, you're gonna create metabolic problems. You're gonna create issues with your hormones and so forth. We see this with, you know, for example, bodybuilding women that, you know, they skip their menstrual cycles and they have low bone densities and so forth, right? So you, there is no need to maintain a calorie deficit, there's no need to maintain a diet all year round. The idea of you know bringing your calories down, losing fat, you do that in the short term to get results, to get to the body that you want, and then you reverse cycle out of it, and then you f the meal plans off. Yeah, that's the idea of it. And the third option is, um, so the reverse dieting strategy, which is to have a few free meals, hear me out, so you finish your diet, go and have a, free, a few free meals, what that means, not free like you don't pay any money for them, but what that means is that they're not ca accounted for, they're not tracked, they're not on a meal plan. You just go to a restaurant and have a free meal, like as in a meal that you're not tracking, you're not monitoring, you're not conscious about, you just order off the menu, yeah? And then pay for it. So that's what I'm talking about with the free meal. So after day 31, should be you know one or two or three meals that you're not tracking, you're not monitoring, you're not weighing, you're not, there's no measuring cups, there's no f scales, that is it. And then on day two or day three following the diet, then you start to introduce a reverse dieting strategy. What is that specifically? I talk more about the strategy of that in another video because that's like another 10 minutes of talking about it. But very, very briefly, keep protein high and you're slowly reintroducing calories at about 150, 200 calories every week. So as I mentioned before, the guy's 2,000 calories. 
you know, 150, 200 calories every week on top. So, you know, for week number one, finishing the diet, it's gonna be 2,150 or 2,200. Week two, 2,400. Week three, 2,600. And you might do that for another two or three weeks until you get to about what they call, you know, if you're watching this, it's called, we call it maintenance level of calories. So the amount of energy that you need in food to maintain your weight. Okay, so maintenance level calories or they call it total daily energy expenditure, right? So all these long terms, right? So if you're interested, I have a video on how to reverse diet correctly, but this is the aim of the game. This is just an awareness video. So if you're watching this and you're really struggling to lose weight, keep it off, and you're wondering why you're putting it back on again, this is the fucking reason. And no one talks about it. You know, the idea of weight loss, the idea of fat loss, is to lose fat, because it's not, I even hate that term weight loss. You wanna lose fat, you wanna keep as much muscle as you can, all the benefits around that, because muscle makes you look fucking good. You know, if you lose muscle and fat, you look like shit. That's the honest truth. So you wanna lose fat, keep muscle, you wanna look good, but you wanna maintain the result. You don't wanna be yo-yo dieting around the ideal, if this is your ideal physique, right? You don't wanna go down and then come past it and put all this weight back on again and then overshoot and then go back on another diet and undershoot and then come back up again. This is what 95% of the population do. Look into reverse dieting. Because the idea is you wanna cut fat, keep muscle, and then keep the body that you want for fucking life. And if you reverse diet, then I can assure you'd be like, you know, 90% ahead of the game because we all talk about the diet, we all talk about the program, we all talk about the six weeks of this and that transformation program, but no one ever talks about the recovery from that. Reverse dieting is essential. I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions, you can always email me and or um, you know, send me a direct message. I'm more than happy to help you out. Hope you're having an awesome day. I'll see you in another video.